In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use OBS software as a simple video switcher, as well as playback pre-recorded video on your live stream. Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. Lots of people have asked me about a lower cost video switcher solution for live streaming. While I think the Blackmagic Design's ATEM switchers are about the lowest cost video switchers you can find and are the best bang for your buck, if you're on a really tight budget and need a way to ease into video streaming in a really simple way, what I'm about to show you might work for you. I've recommended using OBS software as a way to stream to Facebook or YouTube before, but OBS does more than just stream. It can also do some simple switching between video sources. I wouldn't recommend this setup for any more than two cameras. It really doesn't scale up very well because you're asking a whole lot from your computer and eventually purchasing multiple video interfaces will outcost what you'd spend on a switcher. You have to realize that you're getting what you pay for, and in this case, OBS is free software. So with those caveats in mind, let me show you how this works. I've got a Canon Vixia R800, which is a great cheap entry-level camera to start streaming with, and that's coming into my computer through an HDMI cable connected to an AJA UTAP video interface, which is then connected to my computer via USB 3. The UTAP is my favorite video interface right now for live streaming. It's simple to set up and it just works with any camera that I've tried it with. And if you're setting this up from scratch, I'd just duplicate that again for the second camera with the second UTAP device. Since I only have one UTAP, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna have my second camera coming in through a Blackmagic Designs Intensity Shuttle. The reason I don't recommend the shuttle anymore is because it doesn't work with the 1080p 60 video signal that comes out of the Vixia cameras. So I'm having to run my second camera through a format converter to get it to work. And just in preparing for and filming this video, I've had to reboot and disconnect and reconnect the shuttle to get it to keep working. Once you have both cameras and interfaces connected to your computer, open up OBS. The way OBS works is that on the left, you create what they call scenes, that are really just different things you can have OBS show in your video. You can think of scenes as different inputs to your switcher. Create a scene by clicking the plus button and give it a name, I'll call it camera one. Then you need to define what the scene will actually show. So under the sources section next to it, click the plus button and select video capture device. Then select your first video interface. In this case for me, it's the UTAP and then click okay. Now add another scene and call it camera two and add the source. For me, I'll add a Blackmagic device and select the intensity shuttle. Now I have these two scenes and if I were streaming, when I click on them, it would change what camera is sent to the stream. For audio, the default operation of OBS is that when you change scenes, the audio source will also change to the camera that you've selected. This may not be what you want. You may want to connect audio from a mixer to one camera and always use the audio from that camera. To configure that, you'd go to any of the sources that don't have audio connected, click the gear icon next to it and select properties. Then scroll to the bottom of the properties page and check use custom audio device. And then in the dropdown, select the one camera that does have your audio. In that way, when you switch to any camera, it will use the audio from the camera that has audio connected or you could use an audio device that's connected to your computer and select that for all your video sources. There are several other useful features we can use in OBS. First, let's say you wanna start your stream, but you don't necessarily wanna make your camera feed live yet. You could use a welcome graphic. Create a scene, I'll call it welcome screen. And then under sources, select image. Now, when you select that scene, your viewers will see your graphic. Another thing you can do is overlay an image over your video, like a logo in the bottom corner. To do this, create a PNG graphic file with transparency, and then in OBS on your camera scene, add another source. Select image and load your PNG file. that image will now be superimposed over your camera. You'd need to do this for both camera sources if you want it to stay on when you switch cameras. 
or you could create two scenes for each camera, one with the logo and one without. Finally, if you want to play back a video, maybe you have a pre-produced welcome message that you want to play on your stream before you go live, just add a scene, I'll call it video playback, and then under source, select media source. and select your video file. I'll use one of our announcement videos for this demonstration. Now when I select the scene, the video file will be played over the stream. Another useful feature in OBS that can make running it a little easier is if you go into the View menu and select Multi-View. You can see both camera inputs at the same time, so you'll know what's on a camera before you make it live, and then you just have to click on the thumbnail in the Multi-View window, and that will make that scene live on your stream. If you want to see how to set up the actual streaming side of OBS, watch my video on live streaming with the UTAP. There's a step-by-step -step in there on how to go live on YouTube or Facebook. So that is probably the cheapest way to do a multi-camera live stream. While I'm sure it's possible to connect more than two video interfaces to your computer, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not going to scale well, both with the requirements it puts on your computer, as well as the cost of purchasing multiple video interfaces. Eventually, it just becomes more economical to buy a real video switcher. But if you're on a really tight budget and just want to start streaming as simply as possible with two cameras, this could be a good way to get started. Hey, if you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see all my upcoming videos. Until next time, bye.